Inner Quest explores various pathways through which you can connect with the infinite wisdom of the universe and apply it to personal, professional, and spiritual growth. This program, featuring accomplished practitioners, educators, and authors, is provided by Infinity Foundation, an innovative center for holistic studies and research. We invite you to share this journey with us. Hello, welcome to InterQuest. My name is Jay Stone, your host for today, and our guest is Rachel Gendrew. Welcome, Rachel. Thank you. Rachel is the founder and CEO of Soul Service. Rachel uses her, her holistic training and metaphysical background when she works one-on-one -on -one with clients. Rachel has both an MBA and a PhD, and she has a new product called Remove Your Blocks So Your Business Rocks, which will be released soon. Uh, Rachel, why don't you tell our audience about your holistic and metaphysical background well, uh, where do I begin? <laughs> uh, my metaphysical background basically uh, started uh, being born intuitive uh, into a, I have no idea how many generations of in intuition, but uh, throughout my young teenage years, I dabbled in a lot of holistic um, modalities such as Reiki and um, developing your uh, psychic abilities, which was already developed. Um, See, I, when I was a teenager, I didn't know anybody was doing that, although I, I would have probably loved it. Well, actually, when I was a teenager, we had a, a woman who had just came through Savannah, where I was originally from, who uh, learned the Usui Reiki, um, and nobody had known anything about that then. So. There was a very large holistic center that got started in the middle of a very small community, so it was probably a little unusual to have that happen. Um, I actually uh, had went to school, finished up a business degree, and was pretty much on my way to success when I was kind of obstructed with a illness that actually led me to go a little bit deeper inside and, and figure out how that started and, and connect with that. Well, I, I hear that a lot from our guests. Mm -hmm. they, they end up becoming experts in a, in a field uh, because that's what they needed for themselves. As the Course of Miracles say, you teach what you have to learn. Absolutely. So, and and I'm, I'm no different uh, than yourself or our other guests. Mm -hmm. Probably a lot of our audience, uh, we, we become very knowledgeable in what we need to to recover our health. Uh, so what is soul service? Soul service is, is exactly what, what it is. It, it's the service of the soul. It's, it's literally um, a collection of all of the healing modalities that I've collected along the way and created a way to go directly to the core source and connecting them to their truest and highest potential. Mm-hmm. And so uh, that product you're working on, remove your blocks so your business rocks, are those the blocks to the soul? Um, absolutely. It's actually uh, the blockage that is, is uh, keeping you from your inner knowing, your, your inner highest purpose. So um, removing that allows you to be freer in your relationships and in, in your highest potential and and in your business and in your career. So literally that is the main. And I, I would also would think relationships would improve if you remove those blocks. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And so what are uh, some of the signs that people are blocked? Well, they think that they always want to try this change and go down a different path and they always end up right where they started. Um, starting a business and, and it's not flowing like it's supposed to, so it goes bankrupt. Or they're constantly having relationships that are ending. And um, those are, are very good keys of, of being blocked. Actually, even illness is a, is a form of a block, blockage. Now, uh, do, you, do you mainly work with people in businesses? You know, for, or do you get into the um, health issues and 
and relationship issues with your clients? Uh, I'm kind of the, the jack of all trades. So I, I get into relationships and um, we also want to start working with conscious kids. We haven't quite done that yet, but relationships, personal issues, health issues. Um, I want to bring it into the corporate industry because I believe that right now is a, is a good time for awareness and conscious leadership to be exposed. It, we, we all need to become conscious and aware. It's time to wake up. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so what actually occurs in your private sessions? Well, a private session with me um, is a little unique in that I am able to actually intuitively see people in a, in a grid system. So literally I'm able to energetically follow their energy, their map, right to the core source and using a set of very easy tools and processes guide them into releasing it, which is like an onion. Okay, and did you uh, come up with this system yourself or were you trained in it by other people or you just took a bunch of trainings and you very eclectic and added your own uh, twist to it? Well, it was a trial and error. So literally from being you know, very young and being able to see people on this system, I wasn't quite exactly sure how I was supposed to do this. So before I would use uh, doing... Um, uh, future readings and that didn't seem to work and then doing a holistic approach and that didn't seem to work and then doing an energetic process of just an emotional release that didn't seem to work so literally after doing a series of, of uh, classes and, and, and reading on my own I was actually able to find a, a set of tools and processes that allowed me to go inside of me and, 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 and open up becoming more of myself and, and being able to be more of a and facilitator. Is, are there a name for those tools that you use? Um, well, I have a whole bunch of them, but actually one in general is, is uh, called Access Conscious Tools, and it's literally using questions for answers and, and um, allowing people to access their inner knowing, um, which is, of course, we know everything that we think we don't know. <laughs> okay, and so is it possible that for a person do it on oneself? Could a man do it on himself or a woman do it on herself? Not to get to the core tap root. Mm -hmm. that's, that's quite tricky. And that's where being intuitive comes in. Because subconsciously, if we were able to see inside of our subconscious and know where that core root was at and, and, and the whole entire reason that it got there, of course we would be able to do that. But that hasn't worked so far. So, so apparently being able to go straight to the core and, and getting rid of that, but the tools and processes that, that I also teach allow people to continue to move forward and staying clear. And, and what do you teach to, to your clients and students? I teach them to be in question, being in a state of allowance and acceptance and, and allowing everything to be exactly what it is without judging, mm -hmm. but then also always being in question mm -hmm. for the question is always the answer. Uh huh. Well, it's sometimes people ask the wrong question. Like I'll have clients that say, "Well, why am I such an idiot?" And they get all the reasons why they're idiot instead <laughs> of, instead of saying, "Well, how can I be smarter?" Or "Why am I such a loser?" And I get all the reasons why they're losing instead of saying, "Well, how can I be a winner?" Right. It's flipping the coin. It's instead of looking at the glass half empty, it's looking at the glass half full. Mm -hmm. It's looking at the possibility aspect of it, and always creating more possibility and connecting to more possibility and infinite possibility. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, what is a, a core energetic blockage? Well, a core energetic blockage is clearly e exactly that. It's a, it's a, it's a blockage that's it's, it's literally in your inner core. It's is, is it a physical blockage? Is it well, you have many bodies. It's, yeah. it's your, your mental, physical, etheric all mm -hmm. of it. It's, it's actually, it's, it's a blend of many different fibers. So everyone is unique and most people call it karma. Um, and can you use your intuition or psyche to see the blockage? Absolutely, absolutely. Like I said, I, I'm able to actually see people on, on a grid system so I can see many blockages. However, Following the energy pattern and con connecting all of the dots usually takes me right to the inner core issue. I mean, usually I can see it right away, but some people have some hidden things because well, they want to keep it. I, well, I, I know some people are so gifted they could actually 
do it long distance, you uh, know, over yeah. a phone or mm -hmm. uh, such. Can, yes. you, can you do that as Absolutely. well? Absolutely. I could actually probably do that sitting with somebody, but since we have been programmed to believe it takes so much work to actually get there or get rid of something or become free of something, it allows me to interact with them in such a way that it helps them in, in feeling that they're part of um, releasing that. Now, uh, do you have to get permission? Let's say you meet someone, you know, you're at a party, you meet someone, or and and you know they could benefit from your help. Do you have to get like permission to work on someone? Well, they have to choose to to come to me, or they have to choose for some reason to to come in and and have service done. So absolutely, you know, I can't have somebody call me on the phone and say, you know, uh, my husband's being. Uh, very judgmental and I want him to stop doing that. Through her, if she comes in to get work done, of course uh, it will affect him in a way, mm -hmm. but in order for me to clearly work on him, I would need his permission. Now, is it possible for someone to use, let's say, their psychic ability uh, to harm others? If they chose in, to in do it, that, but I don't know why anybody would do that. But yeah, okay. yeah, there, people could do that and do some damage with using their intuition. That's that's why I think some of these people that actually do readings or prophecies could literally inflict uh, a, a belief into somebody's head that once they leave, now they have just created a limitation in their life and being able to move forward. Mm -hmm. And so how do you differ than other people who are doing energy work or core work? Well, I believe that I am different in a, in a sense because my priority revolves around um, guiding people and connecting them to their consciousness and their awareness and their, and their highest potential. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe that, you know, in doing so, it creates a better world. Don't we all want to live in a better world? Well, I, I know every time I realize some of my potential, I, I feel better and mm -hmm. I'm happier, usually have more energy, because mm -hmm. I think it, it, we waste energy uh, when we're holding on to energy with the block. It takes more energy to hold on to your garbage or your limitations than it is to be happy and to have joy. So how does removing the core blockage create a balance between mind, body, spirit, and soul? Well, clearly having the blockage is what's actually creating the imbalance in, in every aspect of your life. So your core blockage doesn't only affect your health or affect the way that you perceive, be, and know. It affects your business. It affects your career. It affects your relationships. It affects your networks. It affects your ability to even believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. So, removing that frees you in every aspect of your life. And so, and, and I'm kind of getting like the soul service is kind of like a double entendre, because if, if you're providing soul service, you all, your soul is serving others, but then when you help other people remove their blockage, they too uh, begin uh, a soul service on their own. Right, it's it's almost kind of that effect where you toss that tone into the to that stone into the water, and then you have that ripple effect. So, and not only is it when I'm being a contribution to uh, assisting somebody to release it, I'm also allowing myself the gratification in in releasing something else. Mm -hmm. So it's a win-win. Well, I, the uh, well, anybody who's uh, providing service of their soul is, I mean, they're living their life with a with a purpose or a reason, which is... Absolutely. Yeah. According to Viktor Frankl, the psychiatrist, that's the best way to heal and that's the best way to continue to move forward. Uh, Absolutely. And have direction. All right. If blockages are ignored, uh, how will they affect one's life? Well, clearly, if you're not living your truest and highest potential, you're either in autopilot you're, 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 you're not in your body, so what kind of uh, joyful life is that? Mm -hmm. And yes, I do believe that there are people that are in autopilot and, and are just allowing themselves to be okay with where they are. Well, let's, uh, I, I'm wondering if there's some way that we, you can reach out to the audience now and help them uh, remove a block with an exercise. Could you do that? Sure. Okay. Sure. 
let's 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 try it and i'll 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 go i'll i'll do my processes in internally and and we'll take guidance from you well actually we'll just go do go through a, a meditative uh, a meditative process that i use that allows people to even just melt away stress and guilt and anger and all of that and that's that's fun how long will this take like about 5 minutes not even that i think we got we can we got the time let's go for it Okay, so rub your hands together. Okay. Go ahead and place them palm up on okay. your lap. Close your eyes. So just get a very good sense of you. And we're going to picture the sun descending from the sky coming down, reaching to the top of our head, the sun being the consciousness, unconditional love. And I'm just going to interject, normally you wouldn't, but I, I do feel warmth. Yeah. So I want you to just internally ask your heart to open up and receive this beautiful, infinite, loving light into your being. And then I want you to allow the sun to enter in through your crown. And come into your being, lighting up your entire inner self. And as the unconditional love within you, the warmth of it, I want you to just feel from the top of your head down to the bottom of your feet, all of the grief, all of the stress, any anger, jealousy, pain, and any other ailments that you feel that you would just like to allow to melt out of you. So from the top of your head, down to your feet. Just allow it to melt away. And now just say, I love myself. I love myself. I love myself and I'm ready to receive myself. Now just go ahead and take a big deep breath and let it out. And so be it. Well, it was good. I, I enjoyed that. Of course, I been meditating once a day for 30 years, most days twice. But, Fantastic. Um, I caught a little buzz from that. Yay. <laughs> uh, that's good. Now, um, so you teach your clients and students how to relax. That, that, I assume that would be an exercise. That's, a, that's definitely an exercise to get started because the more that you are able to relax, the easier it is for you to let go. Mm-hmm. Right, and uh, well, my hunch is we have psychological and physical defenses. That's right. And then if you relax, you're not on the fence. That's and, right. And you can let it go. That's why I like to do, a, a that's just one series that I've, that I've used, but that's why I like to do that before we get started, because it allows you to build a sense of trust with me and mm -hmm. with yourself, and then, yay. Good, good. Um, now, uh, let's say client comes in, they sit down, we do that, and then you, you still sense a blockage. How are you able to locate the blockage? Do you just scan the person? Do they tell it to you? Are you saying after we've r removed the inner court blockage? Well, uh, at, at any point. Let's, let's say, you know, 
you're in a, you're in a session or you're in a workshop, and all of a sudden mm -hmm. you sense a blockage. You know, how are you able to locate that? Well, I'm able to actually see that on a grid system. So following everyone's energy, I'm able to monitor the room, the vibration, and clearly I can always sense when there there's a blockage. So, so you're you're not seeing with your eye, but you're seeing with your on third, my mental third. screen, definitely. Yeah. Okay. That that makes sense. And then uh, during that exercise that you did with that we just did, you started with the head and then worked your way down. Is there any particular reason why you went from the head down? Well, to start with, I like to allow universal energy to come through and, 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 and ground you. So clearly going from top to bottom is sending it back into the ground. And mm -hmm. it's just my point of view, and it, I can take it up if I would like to. I don't have any rhyme or reason, so. Okay, okay. Uh, but, but there is positive energy in the earth, too. Both ways, definitely. Yeah. So the energy above is heaven's energy and energy below earth's energy? Absolutely. But it's, uh, you know, and it's a lot easier for people who have that mental block of being able to picture things when I'm saying them. So it's easier for me to guide them in that meditation by using the sun because who can't picture the sun? Yeah. And <laughs> I, I'm the least visual person and, and yet I was able to picture the sun. So that's... Oh, it, fabulous. It, yeah. Great. Um, so what were your gifts that brought you to your awarenesses? My gifts that brought me to my awareness. Well, um, clearly I have a lot of certifications, more than usual, and going through and getting my PhD and all of the wonderful designations that I've collected didn't bring me to my awareness until I actually found a way to question the universe and be in a state of questioning and allow myself to get into that state of being mm -hmm. and receiving. It's very hard to receive. And how often do you go into that state of being and receive? I'm there now, so mm -hmm. I'm always being. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how did you cultivate be going into that place? Basically, the only, well, let's just go back to where I say questioning allows possibility to enter. Um, when we look for answers, that's when we set up limitations. Mm -hmm. And that's also considered keeping the flow of energy not coming in. So by asking what else is possible or what is the possibility of creating consciousness, what steps do I need to take there, allows the energy of the, of the universe to cultivate that and bring that to me. And mm -hmm. after I tapped into that, it was very clear that that's a very powerful way of staying clear and becoming conscious. You know, your, your family is, you know, you, we talked before the show and, you know, how your family is degrees in accounting and business, you know, but y you're very different. How does the fam your family respond to your metaphysical in inquiry and practice? Well, that's why I actually incorporated a business aspect into it so that I could actually bring my family into this. But um, my mother is actually very supportive. Mm -hmm. And my mother is actually very intuitive as well. My father is just one of those people that's like, well, whatever my wife says is correct, so just listen to her. So that's kind of his way of accepting the metaphysical part of it. I don't really try to f enforce my beliefs on him. Yeah. H have they ever tried any of the exercises like we did? Yes, actually, my mother and my grandmother and my aunt and, and oh, my children. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And, and do you, do, with your children, do you have like a regular practice with them? Well, I've just allowed them to kind of play with the, with the possibility questions and um, allowing them to tap into their own unique way of being. And, you know, my son's fabulous you know he's uh, he's gonna have a bachelor's degree at the end of his graduation of high school so you know how does it get better than that my daughter is a fabulous singer she wants to get on to uh, professional singing and she got on the X Factor but she got a little scared so we didn't push that but what else is possible and that's what she uses and I know that I know that she'll be huge so good good and um, have you worked with other 
children b besides your own? Well, um, that's an interesting question. Uh, their friends always come home with them, and so now I've, I've got to be the, the conscious mommy. So, you know, I, I, we haven't really developed enough of a program yet um, for us to actually take it into the, to the mainstream yet, but uh, we're working on that. Um, clearly, I would actually like to get involved in schools and so forth and creating conscious kids, conscious awareness. But, you know, where, where better to start than my kids? Well, uh, good point. Uh, but parents, they're worried, you know, kids in their teenage years, they'll experiment with alcohol and mm -hmm. drugs, they'll be sexually active. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, do you feel like your techniques and uh, teaching children how to ask questions reduces the, those risks of getting in trouble during well, adolescence? Absolutely. I think so because I believe that it, it actually goes back to allowing them to become responsible for the choices that they make and knowing that every choice they make has a consequence. So, a, a, a Good point, uh, which leads, you know, makes me think about the superego, the, the, the moral part of our, mm -hmm. our minds, the, con the conscience. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to say a few words on, on that? The, the ego aspect? The, the superego, the, the, the moral part of our minds, the, the conscience that says, I can't do this because it's not the right thing to do. Well, my point of view sometimes on that, though, is all of the old limiting beliefs that we've collected from our parents. So those are also the same limiting beliefs that allow us not to go ahead in life or be bigger because we should be small or not True. to excel because excelling means that we might succeed. So stay, stay small. Sure. So to me, that's more of a monkey chatter, and that's not coming from here, which is all, you're all knowing. Mm -hmm. I, and I agree with you that the, the superego can be helpful and harmful in the way you described it. Mm -hmm. was 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 harmful or self-limiting right yeah so using the tools and processes for children just allows them to go from their conscious and awareness here's their knowing and this is just the little teacup of monkey chatter that mm -hmm. that just feeds you all the old limiting beliefs and limitations that don't allow you to be the best that you can be well we we only have about a minute left so i'll, I'll give you that time to make any any point or or you'd like to make? Well, I don't know that I have a point other than wouldn't it be fantastic if everyone just invested in themselves and found that they wanted to honor themselves in becoming aware and conscious and creating the lifestyle of l unlimited possibilities that they possibly could create in their life? Well, the one thing I, I took away is that um, that this question and answer process is natural Absolutely. and 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 the answers really come from our our true self our higher self and and we don't we don't utilize that enough that's right you know oh, i'm getting the signal to wrap up for more information about rachel the infinity foundation interquest talk show stay tuned to the credits at the end until next time wish you good health good spirits and good fortune thank you thank you again rachel thank you information about this show, our guests, Infinity Foundation, or any of our other programs, please visit our website, infinityfoundation.org, or call us at 847-831-8828.